Newton's law of gravity is the law that states that everything has an attractive force that pulls it towards the center of mass. I'm about to show you what it means and how it works in this video. Isaac Newton made a giant leap when he connected the motions of cannonballs to the movements of the planets, thus linking heaven and earth. His law of gravitation remains one of the most powerful ideas in physics, explaining motion both in our world and across the universe. Newton argued that all bodies attract each other through the force of gravity and that the strength of the force drops off with distance squared. The idea of gravity, supposedly, came to Newton when he saw an apple fall from a tree. We don't know if this story is true. But Newton stretched his imagination from earthly to heavenly motions to work out his law of gravitation. He perceived that objects were attracted to the ground by some accelerating force. If apples fall from trees, what if the trees were even higher? Could it reach the moon? Why doesn't the moon fall to the earth like an apple? He wondered. All fell down. Newton's answer lies first in his laws of motion linking forces, mass, and acceleration. A ball fired from a cannon moves a certain distance before falling to the ground. What if it were done more quickly? Then it would travel further. If it was done so fast that it traveled far enough in a straight line, that the earth curved away beneath it, where would it fall? Newton realized that it would be pulled towards earth but would then follow a circular orbit. Just like a satellite constantly being pulled but never reaching the ground. When Olympic hammer throwers spin on their heels, it is the pull of the string that keeps the hammer rotating. Without this pull, the hammer would fly off in a straight line, just as it does on release. It is the same with a cannonball, without the centrally directed force tying the projectile to earth, it would be launched into space. Thinking further, Newton reasoned that the moon also hangs in the sky because it is held by the invisible force of gravity. Without gravity, it could fly off into space. Inverse square law. Newton then tried to quantify his predictions. After exchanging letters with his contemporary, Robert Hooke, he showed that gravity follows an inverse square law. This means that the strength of gravity is determined by the square of the distance from a body. If you are twice as far away from an object, its gravity is four times less, the gravity exerted by the sun would be four times less for a planet in an orbit twice as far from it as the Earth. And a planet three times more distant would have nine times less gravity. Newton's inverse square law of gravity explains the orbits of all the planets, as described in Johannes Kepler's three laws. Newton's law predicted that the planets would travel more quickly near the sun. As they followed their elliptical paths, a planet feels a stronger gravitational force from the sun when it travels close to it, which makes it speed up. As its speed increases, the planet is moving away from the sun, again, gradually slowing back down. Thus, Newton pulled together all his earlier work into one profound theory. Universal law. Generalizing boldly. Newton then proposed that his theory of gravity apply to everything in the universe. Anybody exerts a gravitational force in proportion to its mass, and that force wears off with distance squared. Any two bodies will attract each other. However, because gravity is a weak force we only really observe this for very massive bodies, such as the sun, earth, and planets. If we look closer, though, it is possible to see tiny variations in the local strength of gravity on the surface of the earth. Because massive mountains and rocks of differing densities can raise or reduce the strength of gravity near them, it is possible to use gravity and meters to map out geographical terrains and to learn about the structure of the Earth's crust. Archaeologists may also detect tiny changes in gravity to spot buried settlements. Satellites that measure gravity have been used to track the decreasing amount of ice covering the Earth's poles and also to detect changes in the Earth's crust following large earthquakes. Back in the 17th century, Newton poured all his ideas on gravitation into one book, Philosophiae Naturalis Principium Mathematica, known as the Principium. Published in 1687, it is still revered as a scientific milestone. Newton's universal gravity explained the motions not only of planets and moons but also of projectiles, pendulums, and apples. He explained the orbits of comets, the formation of tides, and the wobbling of the Earth's axis. 
This work cemented his reputation as one of the most distinguished scientists of all time. Relativity. Newton's universal law of gravitation has endured for hundreds of years and it gives a basic description of the motion of bodies. However, science does not stand still. And 20th century scientists have built upon its foundations, notably Einstein with his theory of general relativity. Newtonian gravity still works well for most objects, we see and for the behavior of planets, comets, and asteroids in the solar system. These are spread over large distances from the Sun, where gravity is relatively low. Although Newton's law of gravitation was powerful enough to predict the position of the planet Neptune, discovered in 1846 at the expected location beyond Uranus, it was the orbit of another planet. Mercury, the required physics more advanced than that of Newton. Thus, general relativity is needed to explain situations where gravity is very strong, such as close to the Sun, stars, and black holes. Acceleration. On the surface of the Earth the acceleration of a falling body due to gravity, g, is 9.81 meters per second. 